Hello YouTube, this is Eric from Coder Snacks. Today, we're going to talk about algorithms you should know for coding interviews. Let's get started. You can spend a lifetime studying algorithms, but based on my experience, this is the 20% that will get you 80% of the benefit. You'll be far ahead of the interview competition if you can implement these easily. If you can't, code one or two a day for practice. We'll discuss practice more in the next video, but for now, on to the algorithms. One note, italics means I think an algorithm is optional. I've seen people ask about it during interviews, but infrequently. Prepare it if you can, but it's lower priority. For arrays, be able to implement binary search. Binary search has tricky edge cases and off by one errors, so it's good to practice. Also, if there's a library implementation of it in your language, learn it. It's quite difficult to get a bug-free implementation of binary search. I'll put a link in the description about why, but be careful when you practice and make sure that you have a good implementation. You should be able to implement a linear scan over an array. Also, know when to use a linear scan versus binary search. Finally, be ready to implement randomized selection rank, in place or using auxiliary arrays. Knowing there's a deterministic O of N selection rank is nice, but optional. For linked lists, know the most commonly asked questions. I cover some in the video linked here, but in addition to those, be able to implement common API calls such as add and remove. People are divided about bit manipulation questions. Those who work closer to hardware in lower level languages or who remember when memory was scarce tend to favor bit manipulation questions. People who work in high level languages tend not to use these questions, but since there are many who will ask them, you should be aware of these questions. Your level of preparation for this can also depend on where you're planning to work. Companies like NVIDIA? Definitely. Random, front-end, web 3.0 position? Maybe not as much. But even there, binary and bit manipulation can help with things like color. In any case, to prepare for these questions, you should know what bit masks are and how to make them. You should know how to set, unset, retrieve, and flip specific bits in a number. And you should be able to count the number of one set in a number, both using a straightforward loop and by using a more sophisticated method. Another problem that sometimes comes up for bit manipulation is using XOR to swap numbers without auxiliary space or to get rid of duplicates. You should be aware of that use, but hopefully you don't see it and it's optional to prepare. Next, we'll talk about sorting. Implementing sorting at a whiteboard is rare, but you should be familiar with how sorting works. You should also be familiar with your language's sorting facilities. You should know how to implement one n squared sort, such as insertion sort or bubble sort. You should know how to implement one expected n log n sort, such as merge sort or quick sort. For quick sort, you should know how pivoting works and why quick sort is O of n squared in the worst case. You should be familiar with counting sort, why its runtime complexity can be better than a comparison sort, and in what kinds of conditions. You should also know what it means for a sort to be stable. Optionally, you should know how to implement an in-place quick sort and why comparison sorting has a runtime complexity of O n log n at best. Finally, for Python users, you can familiarize yourself with TimSort and its performance characteristics. Let's move on to strings. Here are a few common things to know for strings. Be able to reverse a string in place, if your language allows it. Some languages have immutable strings, such as Java and Python. In those languages, be able to reverse an array in place instead. No ways of building a string in O of n, one character at a time, instead of brute force O of n squared using string addition. Be familiar with ASCII and Unicode, and how that affects some of these algorithms. Also, anagrams appear frequently as string questions. Be familiar with the idea of canonicalizing an object in some way. Speaking of which, let's talk about hash tables. With canonicalization, you can use a dictionary to find objects that canonicalize to each other. Use the canonical form as the key, and the list of objects as the value. This is useful for anagrams and other problems that require canonicalization. You should also be able to use a dictionary to implement counting to see how many of an item you have. You should know how to use dictionaries for fast lookup of keys to values you care about. 
Actual dictionaries are an example use case here. The word is the key and the definition is the value. Finally, know how to use a set or hash table to deduplicate items. Next, we'll do trees. Know how to do four kinds of tree traversals, pre-order, in-order, post-order, and level-order traversals. Know how to implement a tree, T-R-I-E, and what it's useful for. Algorithmically, be able to traverse binary search trees of various types. We covered binary search trees with numbers, but be able to do it for all kinds of comparables. Strings in particular are often useful, in database indexes or in other ways. Finally and optionally, be able to implement a balanced binary search tree. I said in the last video it's uncommon, which is why I say it's optional. If we talk about tree algorithms, we should also talk about recursion. You should know when to use recursion, notably when you can split problems into similar smaller problems until you find a trivial version of the problem. Know what base cases and recursive cases are. Know how to calculate the runtime complexity of recursive problems using a call tree as a tool. Since recursive solutions are often exponential, know how to improve them through memoization and dynamic programming when appropriate. You should know how to implement memoization and how to calculate the runtime complexity of a memoized function. Dynamic programming is useful, but you can get by without it by leaning on memoization, so we'll consider that optional for now. For stacks and queues, know some uses of them. Breadth-first search and depth-first search are common, and you should know how they're implemented with stacks and queues. Postfix expression evaluation and parenthesis matching are less common, but also illustrative. You should also know how to make a recursive problem iterative using a stack. A common problem extension is to ask how to solve a problem, then ask how to solve it iteratively. Speaking of BFS and DFS, let's discuss graphs. There are many useful graph algorithms, but here are a few to focus on for coding interviews. Depth and breadth first search are most important. Going from a start node to an end node in a graph is common, and you can frame many problems that way if you convert your data to a graph. Also, know when BFS or DFS are better. Be able to identify connected components of graphs using a search. Be familiar with Dijkstra's algorithm for situations when edges have costs. People disagree about topological sort. There are uses in real-life programming, but it's less common. However, I've seen a number of interview questions that use it, and I think you should prepare it. There are also some NP problems that are graph problems, and we'll discuss those in a moment. There are a few optional graph algorithms you might study. A-star, minimal spanning trees, and max flow. For threading and concurrency, be familiar with common problems you might face while implementing threaded applications. See the previous video for examples. There are also a couple of classic problems which you should implement, the dining philosopher's problem and the producer-consumer problem. For parallel processing, look into sharding and what makes for good sharding. Also, think about design problems that can use a farm of computers. Examples include designing Google's web spider, trying to spider the entire internet, implementing petasort, sorting a petabyte of string data, or finding the shortest path between two nodes in a graph so large that it's split among multiple computers. Optionally, depending on what kind of job you're going for, you might want to experiment with MapReduce or Hadoop. Next, we'll discuss NP problems. First, you should know what NP and NP-complete mean. Don't say not polynomial. While you might be asked these in an interview, the real benefit to knowing NP problems is knowing you can't solve them optimally in an efficient way. If you're asked, what's the fastest way to visit all 50 of these cities, you should recognize that the problem is NP and discuss heuristic, non-optimal solutions. The NP problems you should know are traveling salesman, knapsack, subset sum, and vertex cover. More optionally, you might want to know about Hamiltonian paths, graph coloring, and 3SAT. Few people study math for interviews, but knowing some pieces of discrete math can take you from calculating or estimating an answer to a closed form constant time solution. There are a few things you should know. First, you should know 2 to the n for various values of n. Memorize it through 2 to the 10th, 
know that 2 to the 10th is about 1k, and so 2 to the 20th is about a million, 2 to the 30th is about a billion, 2 to the 40th is about a trillion, and so forth. You can get far with knowing everything up to 2 to the 10, and then the 2 to the 10 multiples. For example, 2 to the 32nd, it's 2 squared times 2 to the 30th, which is 4 times a billion. Similarly, know that 2 to the 64th elements are probably not fitting in RAM. Know the difference between permutations and combinations, and the formulas for calculating numbers of both. Know the basics of probability and expected value. There are many questions that want a random selection with uniform probability. Know what that means. Know big O notation. Know binary and how to convert numbers from and to binary, decimal, and hex. Understand induction and how it relates to recursion. Finally, get some practice on estimation problems. Estimating whether a problem fits in RAM is useful. I've often asked people questions such as, I have 100,000 lines of text and I want to do some operation as quickly as possible, what should I do? And been told I should use MapReduce or some other parallel computing method because 100k lines is a lot of data. 100k lines of 80 characters each is only 8 megabytes, which is trivially small. Optionally, learn some about game theory. Design questions are deep, and I can't go fully into them here. I'll put a great link in the description about scalability and architecture design, but here's the one-minute version. There are two kinds of design to think about, object-oriented design and architecture. For both, you should ask who it's for and what the use cases or design requirements are. If you make assumptions, you should state them or better ask about them. You should iterate. Design interviews are discussions. You'll make a proposal, they'll raise objections, you'll fix, and you'll repeat. And then finally, dig into details. Once you have a high-level version, start working on the details. For object-oriented design, know how to lay out a larger program, think about nouns, classes, and verbs, methods, think about interfaces and inheritance, think about how the pieces should talk to each other, and think about what state goes where. For architecture designs, think about the scale, how many people, how much traffic, what size of data, and think about the resources you have. What computers do you have, how much disk, how much network, how many people, what kind of data, how much of a corpus, etc. In general, cover as much ground as you can in 45 minutes without stopping or getting stuck. If you're getting stuck in one area, look at something else. That's not algorithms, but you should practice a few design problems as well. Doing project work can really help with that. There are a few other topics to know about. You should know about testing. At a minimum, you should know what various types of testing are. Unit tests, integration tests, end-to-end tests, white box, black box. You should know how to construct good test cases. You should know what test coverage is. And you should think about how to test your code for any code you make. Testing is highly important to top companies. Making your code as bug-free as possible is essential when outages have huge impact. You should be aware of hybrid data structures. Sometimes you can combine the benefits of two data structures. For example, in a least recently used cache, you can use a linked list to order requests so we know where the least recently used are, and a hash table to keep pointers to the linked list nodes, with the query as a key. If we have a cache hit, we can quickly take an item out of the middle of the list and move it to the end. Keep your eye out for opportunities to combine data structures in interesting ways. Optionally, you might want to know about databases, depending on the job you're applying for. If so, know basic SQL operations such as select, insert, into, and delete. You should know about joins, data normalization, and indexes for performance. Next time, we're going to finish our three video series with a video on the game of interviewing. We'll talk concrete tips on how to practice and prepare for coding interviews, how to do well during the interview, and how to build on your experience afterwards. I hope you got something out of this video. If you have any questions, comments, something I've missed, or problems you want answered or covered, let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, it would be great if you liked the video, subscribed, or both. Thanks so much. See you here next time on Coder Snacks.